All right, so where uh, are we at? Second Shift uh, Brewery. Wait a minute. First, this is this is episode number one of Ham Radio Beer Cast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name. We'll workshop that, I guess. Ham Radio Beer. I mean, I don't want to steal from coffee and ham radio, but beer and ham radio. You know, when people get like, they get sideways when you when you start drinking beer on when you have ham radios nearby. It's like to them drinking and driving. I don't need these, do I? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not illegal to to drink beer and do ham radio or drink anything and do ham radio. But like, when some people see it, they just go berserk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all but we're here at Second Chef Brewery. St. Louis, Missouri. It looks like a butthole. And I got a wet. And what'd you get? I got, they call it the old school pale ale, but it's pretty much a Pilsner. Like 100% a Pilsner. It's the, it's the original OG. And they, Pizzle. they, well, maybe. <laughs> they, well, they have a Pilsner here. Like when I, when I was here and we were, ooh, got it. <laughs> wow. Nice. Gross. Um, when we were, our last unrecorded beer cast, we went to, um, fuck, what was it called? Um, it's somewhere in Maplewood, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the... Not Heavy Riff, but... No. I went here and you went there, and there was the right place. Here was this place, so I ended up getting a Pilsner here, and I liked their Pilsner. And then I had to chug it and drive over there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you made it over there in quick time. Yep. I mean, that's a, that's a little bit of a drive. I mean... Let me let me rephrase that. I had to chug it and then travel over there. Right. You know, sovereign citizen and all that. Sovereign not, not, citizen. You know, adhering to any rules. But I like the I don't know what their like star on the back of their cup is. It looks like the Rick and Morty butthole eyes. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen like their eyes have that little <laughs> no. star. Like that looks like a Rick and Morty eyeball. <laughs> Rick and Morty. I remember what it's like they look like buttholes. <laughs> Rick and Morty. Mine's got mine's got a roid on it. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Uh, all right. So I just got my COVID booster and my flu shot, and I wrote on my finger, my hand, F for flu, C for COVID. Oh, you got just the different so, arms? Just so I could see, like, what hurts more. Uh, my wife got one in both in her right arm, I think. No, left arm, whatever. I think left arm, because she's right-handed, I'm left-handed, so, and I know flu shots hurt the worst after, yeah. the, after the day, and COVID shots just make me sick, so. I, uh... I can't remember if I got mine in the same arm last year or if I got them together. I don't think I got them together. So this time, yeah, I need to go get my flu shot for work because that's required for work. And then I'll get my COVID booster, but I'll see if they can put, put both of them on my butt. <laughs> I wonder, that would probably not be bad, like, because that's a muscle you use all the time <laughs> to walk uh, and to sit and to stand and go upstairs and run and all, you know, play tennis in your case. But like, the reason why it hurts so bad is because, I mean, I don't know what it does to the muscle, like what the mechanism is, but like, you're not using your arm to like constantly do stuff. And it helps to like move and stay yeah. hydrated and do like weights or like stress balls or just keep fluid. So you can kind of flush it out of your muscles, but your butt, I guess you don't need to do that. So I wonder if it would hurt less. I remember a few, full, a, yeah, a few years ago, I got a flu shot in my arm and so you're about to say flu shot my butt no never gotten a <laughs> I, I think the last time i got a shot in my butt was probably whenever i was four <laughs> um Good but time. um yeah and, and i i got it late in the day and flu shots usually like make me a little you know like ugh, i don't feel good yeah i went out like an hour later and played an hour and a half of tennis it's fine yeah yeah, you just because I think it was just you know it was, yeah I was getting through it's my kind of like lactic acid like when you're sore like the best thing to prevent soreness or prevent uh, get rid of soreness is more more exercise ah, like gotcha. go right back to doing whatever it is like whatever if you're, you're super doing. sore and you did like like you max out on weights and you're super sore and you come back to the gym the next day you pull some some weight and you're like oh god the first one really hurts and then it's like oh it's fine and you're back to yeah. like you can hit your max like the next day. We used but, to do that in uh, cross country in high school. Just like mm. we'd run, you know, 20 miles on a Monday. And we're like, coach, don't don't let us. <laughs> God, so we're funny. not running 20 miles again on Tuesday. And he was just like, it only hurts for the first mile. Oh, man. Uh, quadrant came up. I wish I had to save the picture. but I see. I got you. I didn't. I got you. They got tired of us jabbing, so <laughs> they take over their, their spot. Should we take over their spot? 
Think it'll get better? Yeah. No, I don't know. It's couch. Think you set. Let's go. All right. We're going to pause this video. So, you and I had a conversation a while ago about crazy, yeah, far fetched things that will never probably happen in our life lifetime. But ham radio. Unless you code them to to be, to be. This is this is all on you. I'm just the idea generator. But yeah, crazy contest ideas. Contest Where, modernization. Contest modernization. It's a big, big word. I want to start off. You had one that I had not thought of. And so I did a presentation in Chicago and kind of hinted around on this. Was that at SMC? SMC Fest. Fest. Yeah. But I want to talk about your idea. I mean, a lot of the things that I had on my presentation were your ideas, but the one that... <laughs> got me hooked that I didn't even I didn't even put in the presentation was your ham radio fantasy football league. Mm-hmm. Let's how, talk about that for a minute. How do even get that to work? I've been thinking about that more and it's just like fantasy like, football if you don't know for the audience out there is like the thing where you go pick your players you make a fantasy team and like every time a player in real life scores a certain does a certain thing like scores a touchdown or catches a pass or like like gets sacks of some get know. some get some yards yeah there's all kinds of things you can apply points to and then the more points you have you compete against your friends with their particular fantasy team and use shitloads of statistics to like find the best players or you just do it totally random which is what i do and i beat justin like most of the time <laughs> Um, especially like March Madness, like same kind of thing. Like we set up our bracket and I don't look at statistics. I just go like, they have a cooler sounding name, like Duke, like they're going to win this year. And of course they do because they always do apparently. Um, there's something like that. I don't know. But the idea of like applying that to ham radio, once we have like generated this new contesting framework or, or this, I like to call it architecture or framework, just because it's like, we don't really have that beyond uh, like live contest scoreboard right now. Right. The only um, thing that we have that is halfway modern in the contesting world is the online scoreboard, right? Yeah. And and e it even is not like it's it's for, it's kind of like thirty eight. So thirty eight thirty has been around forever. Like ever since contesting has been a thing. You go to thirty eight thirty megahertz or kilohertz. Kilohertz. And you talk about how much you scored, and everyone's like, you know, it's rumors, so you know, it's not like your real score. You have to wait until your log is submitted and it gets scored. And and it was very regionalized because of and, eighty meters. Yeah. So like, sometimes you could even get like people on the edge of those regions, like say like, oh, N one M N one M Q like scored thirty. 5,000 points on this one, and it's like, no way, and turns out he's lying, his score was... It was, yeah, a, it was a game of telephones. Yeah, and but it was super fun because it was a way to know and kind of get a get a grip on, like, how did you do in the contest versus all of your, um, you know, the people who you're actually competing with without having to wait six months for your log to come in. <laughs> or a year if you're missing you, so... bullshit, like... <laughs> and it still is, it's still so bad, like, you have to... You submit your like basically Excel spreadsheet log, or I guess CSV log, ADF, IDF, or Cabrillo. It's a Cabrillo, Cabrillo. Text log, and then that gets submitted into some like SQL database. It, it, it's like not even that. I'm sure it's some I guy like looking through every line and comparing that, cross-checking it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I hope it's not that. It's Come totally on. like if you ever you, it's you gotta, know how it's Missouri Cuso party gets scored, right? <laughs> well, I know how Missouri Cuso party is scored, and that that does get put into a SQL database. But and then it's all it screws PHP. up. Well, yeah. And then it's you all... go in and manually be like, oh, yep, it's this. I think it's all PHP. <laughs> yeah. It's just so bad. Like, and that's why it takes six months is because right. you have a volunteer team of very few people looking at like 10,000 logs and going like, you know, applying a bunch of rules to it and dupe checking and, and rubber clocking and all of these like kind of, um, you know, error checking basically. Right. Um, it should be straightforward, but it really isn't because people screw up their logs and they do all sorts of things. Now, if, um, just inhale a bug. If you, like, have a way to fix that and make it quick, and in the blockchain world, they call it, um, uh, what's the word? 
Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know that much so, about blockchain. So the blockchain is is cool. Like not Bitcoin and not like don't think about Bitcoin or Ethereum yeah, it's or, just, or like NFTs. But it, like it's, it's just it's, a matter of 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 me, uh, automatically reconciling transactions. Yeah. In a pause for like five seconds while I think of the word. In a um, in a indisputable. That's that's a good word. Um, and. Uh, irrefutable way irrefutable so you, you in other words like once they're manually or once they're automatically checked they are they're automatically like there's no way that it cannot be wrong right right yeah there's a word for that and i totally am forgetting it but it's um but to do that it's it has to be connected to a central server or to a distributed kind of blockchain sort of system uh in real time so that when you hit enter on your QSO that you just made, it looks immediately for that other QSO that they just made with you and connects them to, and then that, that becomes a blockchain contract. Right. Like, that's that's literally the, the whole, like, um, reason blockchain exists is to make those, these those, contracts. Those transactions and, yeah. public and able to be traced, but traced to a point where they are they are um, verified between all the people that are running the blockchain, right? Exactly. But let's not like go yeah, to yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. blockchain. So blockchain is a good idea, but like I have to look up that word. What is it called? Um, blockchain is like kind of this idea behind it. But it, it, no matter what it is, it's a it's it's a system that allows you to do real time contesting scoring, right? And be able to finalize a score seconds after a contest is done exactly like as soon as like 21 23 59 rolls over to 20 or 0000, 000, 000 like there's the scores like right. they're, they're published they're already they've already been checked with everyone nobody actually submits a log your log is automatically uploaded every single qso is automatically uploaded looked. to the either centralized database or distributed ledger if in, in the blockchain case, and and that's a that's a big deal because some people, like the the, in most contests, mm -hmm. in the big contests, I think it's seven days. Well, you get seven days to download your log, right? And literally, like if you want to peruse through it and cheat and fix your log, that's called rubber clocking. Is like a big cheating um, way to cheat, right? So, why not? I mean, the 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 ethics of contesting say that after the contest is done, you submit your log. Yep. No matter how bad it is, how whatever. You, you don't fix anything after you, after you, after the right. clock rolls or you decide you're done, you just submit it right then and there. Now, there are paper logs, which are still a thing, which should not be a thing anymore. Right. But uh, that is a thing. Um, and I guess that's the kind of time they give them the, the benefit of that, of the, the um, ingress, ingress, like entry period. Like you, they, you can, lit, I think sweepstakes and like AWR contests, you can still submit a paper log and they'll actually score it. And right. use something like yeah. FLE to like log it all. Um, hopefully your handwriting is good. But the, but the concept of two minutes after the contest is done, they are, the central server is val already validated all of the scores, all of the dupes, all of the, the, the busted calls. Yep. And gives a score for that, what is the word? Immutable. Immutable. Oh uh, my gosh. Yeah. So an immutable ledger means. There we go. Immutable ledger means like, the basically database is. It cannot be edited, and it is it is like truth. Gotcha. Despite the fact, like, okay, you can have somebody come in and log like bogus contacts, but like, the system should be able to say this guy is logging, and it doesn't connect to anything in real life. Right. So like blow those contacts away and right. like send a pink pink slip to that you know contester um, but after so after the 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 scores are tallied two minutes after the contest is done then they're displayed and to bring this back into fantasy ham radio yeah is just like a game just like a, a tackle is logged and after that tackle is logged it gets posted to the master stats mm -hmm. and then those master stats get uploaded to ESPN or Yahoo or whatever the ESPN 73 <laughs> whatever we'll talk about that in a minute <laughs> whatever 
whatever See, fantasy football tricky. league you are playing in, and then points get awarded to those players right. for their performance. Yep. Same thing with ham radio. Yep. So even before the contest is over, like, you know, that's when points are scored. So, and, and they can drill down into any kind of statistic you can imagine. The really hard part maybe is like trying to use like particular station characteristics like power, um, but also like antenna design, like exactly yeah. what antennas are you using. Are you using like four on four on four on four, like for, you know, for every band or are you using like hundred watts in a wire or using like, I don't know, uh, attic gutters. Like are you using your gutter? Like how can we weight those differently? How right. can we like do, um, handicap. you know, handicap them and, and improve upon um, or use that as, as a statistic that is comparable between stations to like say if if a station um with stacks on stacks contacted a dx station that was like 100 watts on wire that's a certain number of points but if this station with 100 watts on wire contacted that station and 100, 100 watts on wire then that's even more points yeah um yeah, that's and then point. also like um other things oh what else like there are different like methodologies and ways that particular contesters uh use like st strategies if you will um, there are a lot of people who say please copy. So <laughs> like kind of, how do you negative one? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How do you, um, and I'm not saying like we, we record every second of every word that people say, but, um, how do you maybe take that into account? Like some rookie contesters can use like please copy or whatever versus like, you know, pro contesters who are like boom, 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 like really quick and efficient. Um, well, that's where you get into kind of handicapped idea, right? That's where you get into, what was that? that program that you installed that you made a TikTok of? Whisper AI. Whisper AI. Yeah. Where you, so from what I understand, I'm not a top two or three or four contester. I mean, I have scored in the top 10 in some major contests, but the, if you were gonna potentially score in the top, let's say five, do you still have to submit a recording in like Seeker Worldwide and WPX of your contest, is that still a thing? If you were like a top tier contest, I don't know. I don't see any rule that would say like, if you're like, if you get, if you actually legitimately got like number one and you didn't submit a log, yeah, is that what you're saying? Yeah, does, does, does N6MJ, does he submit a, a, um, a recording of his oh, a recording, yeah, yeah, a recording. No, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that that used to be a was, thing. I don't know if so, that's still so. So if thing. you do submit a log, you also have to submit with it a recording of your right. So like QSO rec or QSO log, right? Like whatever that thing does. I mean, wouldn't it be great instead of instead of submitting a recording, you'd submit a what was that Whisper AI, mm -hmm. a Whisper AI transaction file hmm. that has all of your 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 yeah recording your transcription. And then it would go through and say, all right, you said, please copy 150 times. <laughs> you get doc 10 points. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. So um, Whisper yeah. AI, you know, just to backtrack, like Whisper AI is a uh, open source tool. It's not open source. I guess it's open access tool for um, text to speech. And it's very, very, very good. So if you ever like texted with your phone um, through Google Voice AI or through like uh, Siri, like it, you can text with your voice pretty pretty accurately, and I was experimenting with this. Um, but those are closed closed. Like you can't access their APIs unless you're like a developer and you have you know a ability to use them. Whisper AI is like this new um, AI, um, kind of like how Dolly came about. Like so the thing where you can put in like text and then like images appear right. of that text that yeah. are all AI generated. The same company, OpenAI, makes this Whisper AI tool, which is for text to speech. Um, and it's very accurate. If if you're clear, you know, enunciating, like it will 100%. Like I think it was like 99 with like two sigma present or six five four sigma, like accuracy for like perfect enunciation. But like I was like experimenting. What happens if you put noise and you do HF or you have like a you know super big southern drawl or and it but it has like language like it does uh, I don't know 1500 different languages or something like that. It, it would be interesting to see what it can do with like a 2-2 a two -two signal versus right. a 5-5 five -five versus a 5-9. It's a five definitely nine. not optimized for, for noise, that's for sure, because yeah. it's, optimized, it's optimized for voice to text. And the idea is like your phone is close to your mouth and you're trying to enunciate to it, like right. text you want to it to read out. 
Um, but I experimented and it, it's still pretty accurate. It's, I mean, it could probably tell a please copy out of a 2-2 signal, but when yeah. you get to like November 0, Sierra, Sierra, Charlie, it's going to be like, this isn't like real language. So its but training you, algorithm is real English, but what but, if we had a training algorithm for ham radio? Right. So take N6MJ's like QSO rec, plug it into an AI algorithm. Right. You get yourself ham whisper AI. Right. <laughs> but yeah, that, that kind of thing could be utilized. And I, I was initially thinking of that as a, um, an, a single sideband version of reverse beacon network. Yeah, that's what your TikTok was about. Yeah. Is if we could take reverse beacon network and take AI software that does voice recognition and be able to spot people on single sideband through the reverse beacon network. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, you can do that in CW or RIDI or PSK or um, FT8 right now. And it automatically publishes to your thing. Now, nothing's like that. Nothing like that is available for single sideband, but imagine a CW skimmer, but SSB skimmer. And it just looks at every single SSB signal and listens for CQ, CQ, CQ. Um, that certainly right now in Whisper AI, because Whisper AI takes even for the clearest signal shitloads of computing power. Yeah. Um, my Mac took it, like, it took about one to one. So it took about 30 seconds to decode a 30 second uh, um, transcription to decode, to, to, to uh, transcribe a 30 second transcription. So think about but, it on a contest weekend that there are. You hundreds got like at least of hundred, like. hundreds of people trying to create. Think of field day. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> if you distribute and you know, parallelize that, um, you can right. you can get a lot of power out of it. And certainly for like something like Poda, if you're not able to send a spot um, and you call CQ Poda, like it'll say CQ Poda, and then you know there aren't that many CQ Poders out there out there at any given moment. But, right. Um, that that is an easier problem to solve. But during a contest, it would be crazy. Yeah. But even yeah. during contest, CW scrimmer kind of goes nuts because that's a lot of yeah. There's a there's a lot of times that compute. it doesn't pick up the correct call sign, and it doesn't pick up call signs at all. Right. RBM is down. Yada yada. <laughs> but, but I mean, to go back to your point of of fantasy ham radio is you have to literally the point is you have to instantly score the contest, you have to publish those results. Right. And then those people would get points based on different criteria that were sent up, set up for Yagis versus Dipoles versus power versus yeah. locations versus yada. I mean, even the most simple thing is like during this con particular contest, I think of it like uh, like video gaming. Like you'll have specific perks to do specific things um, or uh, specific uh, achievements to make in a certain amount of time. So in video gaming, it's like, um, what's something that might pop up? Like... Uh, Fortnite is a, is a great example because there's always these goofy things that, that end up popping up. I, I don't play Fortnite, but I know I watch, I watch a lot of YouTube. They're like, a thing will appear and everyone has to go there and shoot it. Like, and you get points for that. Or like, if you kill a certain number of enemies with a certain gun or um, with a, using a certain perk, then you get bonus like, right. for, for that round. And, it's almost like a scavenger hunt to yeah, a certain extent. Yeah, pretty much. And that's pretty cool. And I could use, you can see that in ham radio easily. Like we could have a database, a list of everyone who's contesting at that moment because they're all submitting their, you know, instantaneous log up to the contest server um, and say, ah, oh, yeah, AA0Z, if you work him, you get like a bunch of points because he just appeared. Like he just started contesting. So right. it's benefiting you because kind of like a TikTok algorithm. If you ever got on TikTok and you put out your first couple TikToks, they get millions of views or hundreds of thousands, thousands, <laughs> lots million, of likes. Millions. And and then as you go, you kind of they kind of deprioritize you because like that's just how the algorithm is. But they want you to stick around and get like invigorated. That what that actually sounds like a really cool thing to do on ham radio. Like incentivize people to work a new or a rookie or a uh, a station that just appeared or a particular DX that is very rare or, or something. That would be awesome. And then you bonus your points up Right. Like that. You start, you know, contest starts at 6 p.m. on Friday, central time. Yeah. And you get to Saturday afternoon and there's somebody that just came on that has been on for 10 or 15 minutes calling CQ, running. Yep. That would be awesome. To what do you have call like, it? Like, I, I think of them like real-time molts. Or um, scavenger molts, or something like. There's scavenger a scavenger molts. Like there, there ought to be a good word for it. But uh, but in your interface, so like 
um, in uh, Node-RED or whatever this future interface is, like, you'll get a notification saying, like, um, PJ5, what is, what is uh, North Korea? Is P5. P5. P5 DX came up, like, if you work them, you'll get, like, 100 bonus points. Right. And so, like, huge pileup on PJ5 um, or P5 uh, or something like that. Or, or if, um, I don't know, who's yeah. a rookie around here? Yeah. You have to have that in your contesting software to, to alert you on, on possible new malts, new people, right. new, new things that yeah. you need to do, right? And this, like, to be clear, this isn't based on spotting. This is like, to participate in this contest, you must like, have your log set up with an internet connection and then sending right. all of your data to the central server. So it knows like that's a new, new, uh, a new contester. Let's go dogpile on him for a while. There's a thing in Twitch, um, Twitch TV, which is uh, stream raids, where if you're if you're closing out your stream, you say, "Oh, let's What's go." What's it see. called? Stream raid. Oh, raids. Okay. Yeah, R A I D, yeah, 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 like yeah. raid shadow legends. But like, if you um, if you're finishing out your stream, you say, "Oh, let's go raid um, coffee," and like you know, you'll send like 1,400 people to their stream yeah, to like bomb them with like chats and love and and money and emotes and all this stuff. So that these low streamers, these low, um, you know, low income or no income or like new streamers can get some love from like big time streamers. And they do that a lot. And so I kind of can see kind of like a raid on that guy. Right. And it's fun. Like, but. You almost have to set yourself up to say, hey, I wanted to be raided or I want to fair, participate yeah. like this. Because a new rookie might be like, I just want to search and pounce for a while and then I'm going to run. And then as soon as it gets too, too crazy, I'm not going to run anymore. Sure. Right. Yeah. But if you check the box to say, allow me to be rated, <laughs> all bets are off, right? Mm -hmm. and, and to be clear, like this flies in the face of the rules of current contesting. Like if you're, <laughs> yeah, if, you're in, <laughs> if you're trying to like, uh, not antagonize, what's the word? If you're trying to incentivize like working that particular station, that puts them at an uneven advantage, like compared to everyone right. else. So this is almost like a sub contest and maybe even like there has to be this transition period where like, you're legally, you're not working within the bounds of the current rules, but you're still contesting. You're on the air for that contest. And instead of you being officially scored, you submit a check log. That's always, you always want to submit a check log if you're not like bound to the rules right. and you're doing something crazy like this, um, just so that, you know, people who you legitimately work, um, it, it helps their six month scoring algorithm to figure out like who, who got what score. Um, but at the same time, like you submit this to a separate, like this is a contest within the contest. Um, submit this to a separate entity, uh, our central server, our decentralized ledger, and you do all your fun stuff. And, and this incentivizes like a new younger crew and next generation. It, it brings more pizzazz. It puts more chutzpah. And, and, and what does uh, Brad Leone say on Bon Appetit? Just like, zhuzh it up. Like, because <laughs> contesting is boring. Like, yeah. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. Like you work station it's fun station, if, if and you, you pile are, ups and you're if you are contesting, it's fun. But somebody who does not know what contesting is, looking on the outside, what is the incentive? Like we have all of these old geezers that say, I spent thirty six hours in a chair trying to work, you know, you know, whatever contest. That doesn't sound fun to me. Right. Yep. And and this is like this feeds into this idea of like instead of sitting 36 hours or the whole duration of the contest, you can get on for like a sprint style. So there's sprint contests, they exist, but there's not so many people on for sprints. Um, we, yeah, we need to have sprints and incentives on longer duration contests to say, right. hey, this isn't so big. You can, you can do Seeker Worldwide, but only work four to six hours if you want. Yeah. And here are, like 30 minutes. here are the people that you're contesting against, and here are the incentives. Yeah, and it pairs you up with the same people in your group of people working that 30 minute like schedule, um, or right. four hour schedule, whatever, in between like a sprint time duration. And, the, uh, uh, and you get scored comparative to those things. But again, like you're not, you're not, you're, you're, your final score isn't going to be comparative with the people right. who sat in the chair for 36 hours. Um, you're just going to be like, you know, in these little subcategories or these these subcontest sprint 
type things. And, th that's, and that's easily facilitated through this kind of. Th that means. is one thing that I do not like about contesting. I like I don't like a, a lot of things, but one of the things is if I just want to pop in for six hours on a 48 hour contest, I'm scored against someone who sat yeah. in the chair for the whole duration of the contest. Yeah. It's at unfair. That point, you have to like score yourself against yourself. Like your rate, like you're looking at your hourly rates and things like that, but that's inside your head. Like that's not on a billboard or on a scoreboard right. or anything. There's nobody doing that for you. Right. You have to do that for yourself. Exactly. And, and that's fun and people do that. But like, imagine if that got expanded out into a I mean, hell, a like matrix. a multiplayer lobby. Like, if you if you go on Call of, Call of Duty, is like open now. If you go on any any video game, Rocket League or Call of Duty or Battlefield, whatever, you get into a lobby and you get paired up with a team instantaneously, and you go out and do your your scenario, your mission, or campaign, or yeah, that would be cool. Or whatever. You you yeah you you sign up for. Hey, I just want to contest by myself, but I want to contest as a team. Sure. Right? Yeah, you can do it as a team. And, and, then and you, you get... Everyone scored on the same right. playing field. Right. While this whole big contest is going on. The only thing that I don't understand and how it would work is, you know, you have these team, these, you know, you watch Twitch and you've got six or eight people on a team and they're doing a mission and they're all talking to one another while they're playing how would we get to the point where people would be communicating with each other while they're doing a single sideband contest? That would be tough. Yeah. Chewing that, I gotta pee real bad. <laughs> real bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you do that, I think we are going to take a break and change out batteries. How about that? Good. Stay tuned. Th this, this is meant to be listened to, hopefully, Everyone out there has YouTube Red where you can listen to it while you're uh, not watching the video. Ooh, it's premium now. What oh, I would do premium. is, uh, um, I mean, I have a pro podcast platform still. Like, I actually pay Libsyn $5 a month for oh, we should put it out there, then. keeping uh, the Phasing Line podcast open. We should put it out there, then. <laughs> what the Phasing? Marty would be I remember so the Phasing Line. upset that I didn't invite him to this. You know... He is invited to every Sunday with myself on Ham Radio Now. And Marty has not... Mm. I haven't seen Marty in months. Marty's yeah, doing, Marty and Gary did a, did a lot of work together. Yeah. I think, right? M Marty is busy doing other things. He is very busy. I think he's at college, Northwestern, in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, before I, even before I, like... Phasing line, he was busy. During phasing line, he was busy. Yeah. Um, but I'm just some 30-year-old dude with a full-time job, and I don't do anything during the evening. So, <laughs> Actually, I have, I have my, my therapist is like, I'm telling my therapist, like, why is it when I come home, like, I'm just shut off? Like, I don't feel, like, I don't, I'm not doing, like, 150% of work. Like, I'm, I'm busy, but let's not, like, crazy. You're not, um, you're not winning any awards at work. No, it's not like I'm working in Silicon Valley. I'm working for a giant multinational like aerospace company, and you know, in the defense industry, and things are pretty slow there, as opposed to like startups and SpaceX and. Yeah, you're not launching. I'm you're not, not launching a rocket fast. to the to uh, to low Earth altitudes. Yeah, I'm not every even 90 days, are you? The, even the SLS, which is one of our like. You know, our I guess ULA is a subsidiary. Are they a subsidiary? Um, and anyway, like we're we're part of that whole ULA thing with the SLS, the big giant moon rocket that we're shooting. Yep. They they saw a hurricane come in like 500 miles away, and it's like, nope, I gotta go back inside. Right as they were about to shoot it off, but have, have they all these leaks and issues and stuff? So have they put a? I'm not even on that team. Do they have a launch date for the the new, the big uh, the big rocket that's gonna? The SLS. Yeah. Well, they, it's gonna uh, go back to the moon. They had, yeah, that's the that's the ULA Space Launch System SLS, the big orange rocket, and it uh, does. I don't think I don't know. Maybe they do have a new date, um, but they had to roll it back into the vertical assembly building because of the hurricane. Right. And my wife's calling me. Pause. Pause. <laughs> hey, what's up? Um, what are you getting? Yeah, I'll just eat off of yours. Um, when will it be ready? Uh, 
Well, that's why I'm asking you. Because it's always like, oh, it could be two hours or it could be one hour. Yeah. Sort it for like 6.30. If that works. Yeah. Okay. Work for you, work for me. All right. No, actually, I, I want that mushroom pizza again. Yeah. All right. No. All right. See you. Thanks. I thought she went to Houston. That's next week. Oh, that's uh, next week. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, she was like struggling to get a flight because she left the company and then came back, and now all of her systems and stuff are totally screwed up. So, we use Concur at work, and I guess it doesn't like when you come when you leave and you come back. <laughs> <laughs> it it uh, screws up all of the uh, the Gantt charts. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, all right, so we we were talking about crazy contest ideas after we both went pee. Yep. And talked about fantasy football. But one of the things that you had talked about is like the the perks mid contest. And one thing that you said to me a while ago was, wouldn't it be great if like you are running and you get a certain amount of cues per hour, right? Your cue rate is a certain amount. You would instantly get access to a stack of Yagi's that you would oh. you would be able to to instantly make, yeah. you know, if you got uh, five over five over five, right? And, or uh, three over three over three, yeah. that, that's more realistic, of just a stack of Yagi's and you would be able to have that for 15 minutes what would that do to, you know, if, if you had a 100 watts in a wire and then you instantly had a stack of Yagi's, what would that do, right? Oh, my God. Like, this was my favorite idea, like, out of that whole conversation we had. It's just, like, imagine if this was, like, video gaming. I mean, this is what happens during, you know, multiplayer events. Like, you you, you rack in kills and, and say, like, go back to what we were talking about. Like, you, you do these certain um, scavenger hunt kind of things. Right. You rack, and, and in the video game world, points. you rack up kills or you rack up points or you, you do certain things. You get a kill streak or, you know, how many kills you get before you die. You power up. Yeah, you get power ups. And so um, at this point, like, um, you've done enough, you've gotten enough of those strategies or enough of those um, scavenger hunt things. Now it's like, think of power ups in the ham radio world. Um, think of your home station. It's probably like a dipole in the trees or a vertical dick commander or an infed half wave or anything. And imagine if everything was connected, right? This is pretty hard to like facilitate in current times. Because right, yeah. like not everyone has a flex radio. Not everyone has access to like, I don't know, remote ham radio or remote But in a world that beyond everything was remotable. Yeah. Just imagine like, boom, you did the thing and now you have access to like a contest grade station or like a super station, like a K3LR or a, or a K9CT level, like mega station. And all of a sudden you could hear like every station. And I don't know how it would work, but somehow this frequency is already allocated for you. Like somebody's calling <laughs> CQ and then they got booted off like because like their time left. Right. Um, their time expired, and then the next person comes in on that slot. It's like a sprint. And you only get like 30 seconds or maybe like five minutes or 10 minutes or something on that particular station, already having a run frequency and just working pileups, like boom, 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 right. boom, boom. Right, right. So, so you want to keep up that effort, that like working those little, like, sh um, like sharpshooting those particular like scavenger hunt type contacts or keeping up a certain rate or... Um, well, you would what have else? it for a certain amount of time that you would be able to either double your rate or keep your rate up. Mm -hmm. Or you could pass on that and be like, oh, I don't want that. Yeah. And then it would just go to the next person. Yeah, you have to hit the X button to, to confirm your, you know, drone delivery in, in Call right. of Duty. <laughs> you know, but uh, in the same, same thing here, like you would have to confirm to go to that. And the whole mechanization, like I'm just thinking how hard it would be right now because no would, one... 
you know, no one can even fathom this kind of level of, of you know, contesting architecture. But it would have to be in such a way like everybody's in on it and everybody like gets this perk just at the right time. Um, but you know how they do it in Call of Duty or any other video game. It's like uh, air raid in tw three minutes and 55 seconds. You see this countdown timer in the corner of your screen. And when that expires, um, then it's your time to take your C-130 and start, you know, gunning down like you're right. like crazy uh, and rack up super big points. And you get that only for 30 seconds and then... Uh, it goes up to, and, and I think they do that specifically because it's a resource in a video game, and if you if you have to balance like the overpoweredness of it, like you don't want it to be on at all times, you want to say it's only going to happen at this specific time, and then, then it's going to go to another person. But they, they do this in video games today. Yeah, the, the technology exists. It just it's not it's not coded. We, we live in the gaming world, and how would we migrate that to the ham radio yeah, world? Yeah, I mean, in gaming, there's tens of thousands of people playing, like, a particular type of game at any given moment, not to mention, like, hundreds of thousands of people playing the game itself. So, like, right now, if you look on Steam, I'm sure Rocket League, which is, at this point, a pretty old game. It's where you drive cars and you hit soccer balls in the, in the nets. It's basically car soccer. Oh. Um, where you can fly no your car, and, and it's, it's, um, it's still pretty popular. Um, but it... It probably has like right now 200, 500,000 players. I mean, it's weekend, so probably more like 700 a million players, and they're all playing various games. And then there's probably a whole esports side of it. So like there's uh, different leagues. Like if you're really good at it, you get a platinum, you get a double platinum, you get into whatever league and all this stuff. I mean, it it can be to the point where you don't get. You, you enter your class. I've got a I've got a, a dipole and a hundred watt radio, right? And yeah. If you power up the first time, maybe you get just a Yagi on a 40-foot tower. Yeah. And then you power up again, and you would get maybe a stack of Yagis. Or upgrade to whatever, one level next that you've yeah. got on your and current station. And even think station. about, like, what if, what if you, uh, what do they call it in gaming? They, um, they nerf. Uh, it's not nerf. It's not, I don't think it's like this, but it's basically you de-comp you de or you de um you make it harder for the player. So, like, imagine if you were starting out at your 40-foot Yagi, and then, like, you were in a nerf period where it's, like, you got a, like, shitty attic dipole in the middle of a city. Oh. But, like, every every point, every QSL you made was, like, four times the points. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're yeah, in such yeah. a, like, a, a crappy situation. Yeah. And you're yeah. only in that for a certain amount of time, but, like, you know, maybe you want to be on that because, like, there's a bunch of big stations that you haven't worked and... Um, and you could go to those, or maybe I mean, like... It would be great if, if they had a piece of software that uh, did that, but it, it literally, it could see the waterfall of your radio and, and compare that to different waterfalls of mm. people in, diff, in the same area and say, yeah. you've got a compromised antenna, but the guy that, that is three lots over has got a Yagi. You're not hearing what he is hearing, so therefore that could that could instantly play into your handicap, but then also instantly play into your power-ups yeah, like on, wh on what you've got. The system knows your noise level. Right. And it knows your adjacent, like, you know, you know your, your geogra so geographically it's important because in, in HF, like, I mean, on 20 meters, like, if you go outside a 100-mile circle, if you're within 100 miles, then it sounds about the same everywhere in that 100-mile circle, maybe and that's, 200 miles. Right, and that's what the WRTC says, right. is they try and put oh, people yeah. on the same geography, on the same playing field with the same radios and the same antennas, yep. so they hear the same thing. But even then, it's such a hard engineering thing to right, solve, right, because, right. like, one guy will be under these pylons, and... Another guy will be in like total and dead an airport. silence and an airport. <laughs> with helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get audio frequency QRM, all that stuff. So even that's challenge. But yeah, no, that that's a that's a brilliant way to like to to, to level set to, to to level set and and to incentivize and, and change some some of the calculus that goes into it versus just sitting in a chair for thirty six hours doing right. the same thing. Right. I mean, what if you could even rework stations like that you already like a dupe, but like you're working on a new new a uh, new antenna, a new antenna, a new station altogether. Like the dupes are out of the water and like out of the um, out of the water, out of the picture. Out so of you, the picture, everything yeah. kind of starts back, and you can work those big stations or those hard stations or or whatever. But obviously, like back it up. Like none of this, like all the rules are wrong. Like <laughs> none yeah. of the rules currently like work with this at all. So. Everything kind of has to be off the books till a certain point, till like contest organizers 
become millennials like us <laughs> and then um i th i think that change there's... these rules to make it easier to like facilitate next gen contesting they're working please. on real time contesting i think that they i mean I think the first generations of real-time contesting are being talked about and and concepts are being derived right yeah, now. Yeah, but they've been talking about that for like 10, 15, well, 20 years. Cra Craig K9CT told me at SMC Fest that they were they were they were talking about it and they were very close. Oh, so, but whenever he says very close, does that miss mean that if you decide to check the box to say you're going to to allow real time contesting to occur, like what does it that just mean? Happens. Yeah, like, like what does yeah, that mean? I hate it when these guys are closed like closed box, black hole, like they they don't tell anybody about anything. Even even um, the CEO of AWRL called the uh, the LOTW like not modernization. They had a project to like fix LOTW in some various yeah, ways because and then turn it into a contesting platform. They call it Project X. And so it's super secret. No one can know because, oh yeah, there's competitors. Like there's competition. Like look at Remote Ham Radio versus Be Loud versus like, I don't know, Remote Hams. Right. Um, yeah. There is competition, but everyone's afraid that they're going to get bought out. But like there's no money. Like in there's, Ham Radio. there's no money. None yeah. of this brings you any money. Like it's not like, and maybe maybe this is part of Project X. Who knows? But they're going to like maybe, what if, what if you have to like subscribe to get into the um in, into the LTW version that does this real-time contest scoring um like maybe that's maybe that's the reason why they're so secretive about it but like at the end of the day this sh they shouldn't be because it's ham radio it's all supposed to be open right like ARDC is like well yeah I don't, know, I don't want to call them righteous but like ARDC you know funding all of these fun things they require everything to be open source and I mean ARDC has 44 million dollars wouldn't it wouldn't it be great if oh, they God, took? They got more than that. They got more than that. 107 million. I, it wouldn't it be great if they took <laughs> just a couple of mil of that and they brought some engineers and some programmers in and said, "We're just going to write a contesting platform that yeah, modernizes the whole thing." That's the way this happens. Like, you're not going to get this tomorrow if you just expect Kyle to make a Node-RED dashboard that does all this stuff. Right. Like, you're you're not gonna unless you get like you're gonna have to hire like legitimate programmers and software architects and engineers to like create this solution and and like either blockchain or centralize whatever it is like you're gonna need like a legit database engineer right. to like do this stuff in real time and, and then you're gonna also need to and all buy that. fast servers and if you want to enable one of those cool um, like real time perks and upgrades and and uh, um, whatever they call it, whatever you call them. Um, yeah, just you're resources. Gonna need, you're going to need resources. Or like the, the well, Whisper AI that can detect if you're saying, please right. copy. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to need like a lot of power to, to run that. And then, I mean, just look at the gaming industry. It's multi, multi, multi billion dollar industry. Like people, there's actually Riot Games here, is here in St. Louis. And, oh, there is? You know, they're, um, what do they make? Riot Games. Heck, I don't know. Thinking of Epic, a few a few games. Epic, I mean, but yeah, th th they're they make like Dota or like League of Legends, I think. League of Legends. And gosh, like that's been in development forever, but it's still super popular. I mean, there there are huge tournaments online and in person where people go to Vegas, they go to LA, they go to these places, yeah. and they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to enter in these contests, and they sit in front of a computer screen and contest for eight hours. Why can't that be ham radio? Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of why couldn't that be a WRTC event instead of right. like having? Um, Wouldn't it be great if we had personalities like Doctor Disrespect and we <laughs> we had all of these? It became my classes. It, it became the the uh, uh, the world uh, uh, WWE. <laughs> we had all of the. <laughs> Get my mustache out. Just blow up, think. Imagine me with like a thick mustache. Uh, Here we got K9CT coming in on. Uh, a zero Z. You think he's gonna beat him? Oh, I don't know, Tom. Uh, well, that A zero gets... Z's on N zero X N zero A X station, and it's only got three three towers. There's no way he's gonna beat on CT. <laughs> he's got like five guys on ten this... towers, stacks on stacks on stacks. Like, there's no way. Th this gets into the ESPN seventy three concept yeah. of of real time commenting commentary of ham radio contests. Yeah. Sweepstakes. I want this to happen. So I know a couple of people are starting to, are going to stream sweepstakes in November. Um, I know. Uh, I just we, heard we on, on the do podcast. It, we should do it down at at uh, the contest yeah, station. Yeah. Um, 
because we got gigabit there. Y'all got gigabit down there. Um, but uh, Hosh Nasty, um, Ham Radio Crash Course dude, Josh is going to stream sweepstakes. The whole thing he said on, on the last oh, he uh, said, on Friday he is? podcast. So I'm like, all right, he's in it. Who else is going to stream it? Um, let's get them all together and like let's multiplex everyone's stream somehow. I don't know if it's Restream or Zoom or what. Um, and Get the contest dashboard. And, yeah, get the contest dashboard and actually get me and you or some other like oh, i know I'll, maybe i'll come down to ward's place so it actually provide commentary on this Look we at should the, totally the real, do this yeah like we should totally do it's this. it's gonna happen this is how it happens like we just show how fun it can be even though we're in this tiny niche and like there's only like if you, how many logs were submitted like last wrtc or last uh not I, wrtc ira uhf or cq worldwide oh, like ten thousand. i don't know there's not that many but like this is how you make it fun and, we should, and like completely exhilarating to a generation of, you know, zennials and millennials who grew up on Call of Duty and Fortnite. We should totally do PUBG, this. So know. sweepstakes is the last weekend in November, right? Mm-hmm. So phone. we should, we should literally put together the dashboard, stream the dashboard, and then you can put yourself down in the corner, and then we get like some type of Zoom call together where we're all streaming to Zoom and then we all we all stream, that Zoom channel is streamed to one of our channels and it's just all of us contesting, right? And then we can mute people and yeah. then as they, as they stop contesting, we can bring them on and be like, how's the bands? What do you, there it is right there. Oh, yeah. um, how's the bands? What, how, what, what's your tired factor? You know, what's, uh, what, well, he's got a TF of 2.5 right now. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if he's going to make it at this next, next, uh, next three hour sprint. Like he's got to take a I mean, nap every, soon. And it, it would, it would be totally awesome if we could get to a point where like you're streaming the whole contest and you're taking a break and just like, you know, just like people taking a timeout or being pulled out of the game they go mm -hmm. and they get interviewed by somebody to say how are the bands how are you feeling what do you think is uh, the strategy is right now what 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 band whenever you get back on the radio what band are you going to get back on you know right. yada yada right it's especially so the next five years is prime time um because of the solar cycle right because now we have so before this past five years past you know eight years it's all always been 20 meters on down but, and sometimes 50 meters will open up and 10 meters will kind of have some transectorial. But like now it's like every man for himself. Like you hear, if you hear, like if you go on channel 19 and it's just a blur of like heterodynes, like CB radio, yeah, then that's how you know contesting is gonna get pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. Because once 10 meters open up, like it's DX to, to the other side of the world, no problem, yeah. any time well, of day. Once, once so, 10 meters opens up to Europe all day, you know that it's on. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, this is prime time. This has to happen, and it's perfect time to start because we're we're on the knee of the curve. We're coming up. It's gonna be fun. But like, we, we totally have to do this for sweepstakes. We yeah. We totally have to do this. We're gonna we're gonna break so many rules. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the 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 huge issue is like you can't publish your frequency, and you. But I have a screen for that in yeah, my you, node. You do and, node red dashboard. And, and I think if you have like webcams of of particular like streamer contesters you won't see frequencies or anything but like once you know i think i think one of the arguments i see on like the forums cq contest forum the 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 the, the real geritals like the real geezers out there saying like this is all giving them um unfair advantage like uh like what do you call it? not unfair advantage but like uh, basically if you start streaming and you're contesting and you obscure your frequency, but people know your call sign, they're going to look for you. Yeah. Like you're spotted in some place and they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to work him and I'm going to hear him on my, on the stream, you know? Uh, and it's going to be fun because I'm going to hear my own station. I'm going to make contact with them and I'm going to maybe even troll them. Like that's also a particular like issue. Right. Um, which is all over video gaming as well. But that's a necessary evil for this kind of thing to happen. I think. It's just something you have to deal with. You're going to get, you're going to get trolls everywhere. Yeah. Right. Right. And... I mean, we, we have trolls in contesting right now. It's like you, you get on the wrong frequency. If you go to 14300, you call start calling CQ contest, you're going to get in your fuel by the maritime net. 
if you go on 14313 or 7200, you're going to get an earful of the worst obscenities you've ever heard. Like, you, you, you should go and listen to James, KE8PZN, whenever he's doing a poda activation. They are literally, I mean, they're, they're putting single uh, uh, slow scan television over top of him. <laughs> they're oh putting PSK31 over him. It's just amazing. Jeez, how rude. But like, that's the thing that exists and, yeah. and there's no way around it. But right. like, that's another thing we need to like innovate on is like ways to mitigate um, uh, a trolling. And I mean, ham radio, like your signal I mean, if we were the NSA or if we were like Project Echelon, we would know exactly where you are at any time of the day. If you transmit, if you if you key down, your location is known by like somebody as big as the government. But we hams outnumber the government, you know, many hundreds, many thousands to one, right? So using the system, maybe we could figure out a way to like triad laterate and TDOA uh, a troll station. <laughs> And, and as you see, like, okay, just imagine an ESPN 73, there's like, you know, you got the, 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 think of it like red zone on direct TV where you yeah, like, have yeah, a bunch yeah. of like games going on. And then all of a sudden there's like troll alert or like, uh, um, what do they call it in, um, lid, lid alert, lid alert, lid alert. And, and you see like a bunch of stations <laughs> starting to like receive the signal and it's like, all right, we got this lid. He's not, not, you know, put out a call he sign it. and he's inter interfering with A0Z on his contest. You can see him and you, you know, go to the video and you're just like, get, get this fucking lid, get, get, get. <laughs> you know, and you're, you're livid. And, and then the system goes and finds, um, because we have all these remote transceivers that are GPS, you know, trilaterated, right, uh, right. Kiwi SDR style, a address of this guy, or at least geographic location. Um, which could also facilitate some pretty bad things. I can understand that. Like, I mean, a lot of people would probably want to turn their beams toward him and start, you know, trying Blasting, to fry yeah. his front end. But like, at least that way, the official observer program can be like, hey, buddy, don't do that. And, yeah. and we can name and shame, like, or at least shame and, and, and show you that we can hear you and we know where you live. Right. And that will, that will you know, just uh, make trolling go away, maybe. You, you mentioned something that struck a nerve on so on the on the nfl channel or the direct tv or whatever it was called you've zone. got the red zone yeah right so whenever a team gets in what 20 20 yards of the field gold right it 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 highlights right and you can go to that ch that yeah. that game and watch them if they make a touchdown or not what it, that would be awesome if they could do that for ham radio mm. where you could it lights up whenever you get over a certain QSO rate or you have a certain amount of multipliers. Oh, yeah. And it would do a red zone on that, and then you could hone in on that and see where the action was. Yeah. I mean, if it knows, if the system knows your frequency and it knows the frequency of this, like, DX station or, or, or you're, it's going to be a new molt for you, then, then, then we know, like, as a commentator, it can go to that station and listen to their pileup and listen to their strategy and talk about, like, you know, are they tail ending? Are they front ending? Are they like extending up their call sign? Like, what are they using to like, actually try to break the pile up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, th there is nice. there is so many things that if you conglomerated all of those stations together and you highlighted on the practices and how people contest, just think how many things a new contester would learn. Oh. Because they would see all of that stuff going on, yep. and you could commentate on the good stuff and the bad stuff. Because today, the only way that you're able to figure out what to do and what not to do is either, A, you listen on the air and you figure out on your own, yep. or two, you get invited, you, you contest and someone calls you a lid, or three, you <laughs> get invited to a big contest station, or a, a con yeah. somewhere that they're contesting, and you figure out from just observing what you should do and what you should yeah, not do. Yeah, and, and at that point, like you're with your butt on fire, you're, you're you know, trying to hit the ground, like stumbling. Right. You know, you know what's wrong, you know what's right. You're getting, you know, cold, told by, you know, Tim or, or uh, uh, K9CT, like that's wrong, you know, you need to do it like this. And, right. and that's how you learn, sure. But like, you know, just imagine how attractive this would be to like this current generation of video gamers, this like millennial Gen Z, like, you know, they're, I mean, we're all addicted to our phones and addicted to social media and whatever, blah, blah, blah. But like, this is yet another venue for, for them to, you know, have a hobby in, have a, have a way to like waste Learn. time right. in a, in a productive way that actually like 
So what was like, what, there was like a really recent like explosion of a hobby where it was extremely tech. Maybe it's chess, honestly. Chess got huge. and the, the Chess is huge thing. here. Yeah, I mean, we have the Chess Hall of Fame uh, here in the Central West End. But like when uh, COVID happened, chess blew up. Disc golf blew up. Um, I think chess is like special because it's like a really mental game. Like you have to know a lot. You have, yeah. to, you have to be a professional and, and to really understand it. And that just made tons and tons of people like really understand like the mechanisms, the ways, the, the moves, the, the strategies of chess. Who wouldn't normally have, have done that? Uh, just imagine yeah, cause, that in Because you had, you had casual players, but then whenever COVID hit, people got it really into the strategy. Yeah. And they really got into it. They started it. streaming it like hard. And you could do it virtually. I mean, right. I mean, we go back a long way compare you know relates to ham radio because universities used to do chess matches over hf and and they would just literally say over voice like queen oh. you know baker five to adam 14 like right. or something like that baker five bravo five to alpha 14 Bank, are you using chips? the wrong <laughs> using you, the cop and a, you pozzarello <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, and, you know, and then eventually somebody coded in a data mode and they would use uh, RIDI to, to transmit, to transmit the, yeah. uh, moves. And, um, but still, like, that's, you know, highly technical. There was some other thing I was, I was thinking of. And honestly, right now, TikTok has been, so TikTok Live is, is a cesspit, but, like, there has been a lot of TikTokers who video from their telescopes. So they, they're looking at the moon. Oh, yeah. Jupiter or Saturn. I've seen that on YouTube, yes. And... People go nuts, like 1,400, 1,500 people talking about it, and they learn about orbital mechanics and, like, the names of all the moons and, like, you know, how to actually, like, get a telescope yourself. All these really technical topics that these kids would not have normally have been exposed to or, or understood. Think about that in ham radio. How can we leverage what's going on right now in the world for our own benefit? <laughs> and that sounds kind of like, I don't know, um, maybe selfish, but, like, <laughs> a little selfish. ham radio is a STEM <laughs> hobby. Like, it's... It's it, it's a gateway into good jobs and and the people I want to like market this to, market and actually participate are millennials and Gen Zs and and you know teenagers, who are you know exposed to constant barrages of advertising and video gaming and all that stuff, as this being you know one of those ways to you know waste that time in a good way like, I mean it's all like, I feel like going back to like ARDC like this is like something they should fund easily oh yeah yeah that is totally in their wheelhouse yeah. right but the problem with the ardc is somebody has to write a grant and somebody has to head this up oh writing grants is easy but you did one but <laughs> but somebody has but, to to head this up yeah and somebody has to manage it and hire that's the hard part right and they don't get paid as much as they do it in in silicon in Valley. real life yeah even if if they get paid that's the issue is like ARDC and no no amateur radio foundation, either Yasme or AWR or ARDC, has like funded a project like this. Like we funded um, like M17. Yep. Um, they've gotten money to do things, but like that's not salary money. That's not like that's just livable wage money. Right. That's just like you get I don't know how much an M17, maybe 350 grand to to um, implement, but that's like buying equipment. That's not paying people to like develop. You right. Know? Yep. Um, AWR yeah. AWR is a is a you know, on the other hand, AWRL is an organization, and they're paid by member dues, and they have a few people on staff to, to do staff things like members. But they don't have the QIT, resources to do something like this. Um, IT, but like, yeah, they don't have the money or the the shitspa, the wherewithal to like fund a um, bunch of programmers to develop a contest thing. Maybe that's Project X. Who knows? Because they're keeping it quiet. Like, yeah. Um, and who knows where we're stepping on somebody's toes? But like, this should be an open open source, open project. Um, it should leverage like existing like in, in, and grow existing like um, you know things using APIs like N1M has the API that you use for Node Red. So why? Well, no, no, uh, no, it doesn't. No, it just has it just or, yeah, it, it vomits TP, out uh, UDP TC, packets. UDP stream. Yeah. Um, what was the one that had like a, a uh, N3FJP? Yeah. Uh, okay. So like that or like a remote ham radio. Like a lot of the things we talked about was like requires remoting but like what if remote ham radio had an api and had a system by which like you know all of your remote stations could be uh volunteered for the contest weekend uh, if you weren't contesting in particular and and whatever happened happened on your contest right, like you right. know, your contest station i mean there's a lot of logistics that have to happen for this to to come to fruition but right. it's not like it's not impossible it just needs to be coordinated and I think that we have the technology to do this because we do this in the gaming world today. Yeah. And I think the gaming world is more 
advanced and and high tech than ham radio, we just need a few hooks yep. into the system to make this even more exciting. Right, right. And and now we have the money. Like I mean, ARDC has the money to like fund something like this. Right. To fund programmers to do it. I guess you could see the issue is like maybe remote ham radio wants to do their own thing. Like they have a buttload of money. That's why they keep building like these massive stations. And maybe they're thinking like, how do we make this a game? How do we incentivize this for more people? And they're probably thinking the same thing as we are and not like publishing it. But like, you know, that the spirit of ham radio, it goes against it. If you're if you're trying to keep this closed loop and like you're trying to make your thing profitable, like I, I, I get that. Like this is capitalism, yeah. free market. You can do whatever you want, but like, remember this is ham radio. Like we're, you kind of got to go back to like the people running ESPN 7.3 are probably not profiting on any of this. Like the the contesters, absolutely are not profiting. Right, on it. and the commentators are are going to be you know just giving their time yeah. to the hobby, right? But it is and theoretically they could be paid, but it's like you really don't want to. But you're because... promoting the hobby as a whole, right? Yeah. And the, the whole the whole goal is to promote the hobby. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and and going back to like STEM, like we want to bring young people into this. Yeah, nobody. So that it's like a. I mean, this is a fruitful hobby that results in jobs and, right. and careers in, right. in electrical engineering, computer science, computer engineering, um, all over the place. Yeah. So like, it's critical that that we keep ham radio relevant, and this is like the way to do it. You know. Yep. Yep. And it doesn't even have to be like this huge thing. Like, you know, we can go back and think about like the multiplayer video game. Like, you're in a lobby. Just any time, any anywhere, any place. Like you're in a lobby, and like 14 other people come in the lobby, and then you get paired up as a as a you know seven versus seven team. I like that. And I, I you like do that. like an anytime contest, and you either you can work each other like a sprint, or you can say work that Poda, work that Soda, work that DX, work that guy calling CQ, because you know the it's, system knows. It, it's like, worked all contests, yeah. right? You get paired up with people. You, you have a specific time frame that you're going to contest, and then it's worked all contests. However many contests you can make in a certain amount of period that are individually scored, but then tally up to a group score, that's how you get, yeah. that's how you play the game. And it's only like maybe a 30 minute session or right. an hour or two or whatever. And, and, then, and, and it leverages what is existing in the moment. Like right. if it's a contest, like you make those contacts and this is what you were saying, I think, in, a, in either TO stream or a podcast, like um, contesting, a way to use N1MM or like your system to um, be contest agnostic and just like, so QSO party. QSO, um, yep. That's what you're talking about. They, yep. There was four QSO parties last weekend. Um, what was it? Philadelphia and New Mexico and Nevada. Arizona and Nevada. Arizona and Nevada. And there was no way for N1MM to do all four at once. So you had to like manually. You had to pick one. You know, you have to pick one, or you have to have I don't know four instances of N one M open, which doesn't right. work, and or you like you know do what I do and just open up a Excel spreadsheet, and, <laughs> you know, do it like that, um, and eventually figure out how to convert it to ADIF. But like, just leverage whatever's happening at the moment, and then you can go into a multiplayer ham radio lobby, wait for a couple thirty seconds, two minutes, whatever it takes uh, to get paired up with a team or. To, Paired up like every man, like a death match, every man from the, himself or right. woman or them, 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 some man, woman, or person. The, yeah. their, their pronouns. Yeah. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and then do a little contest. And then you get scored for those particular roles of that particular sub contest, leveraging everything else going on. Right. Whether it's a contest or an event or a special event or just some dude who is calling CQ. Right. You know, you just you turn on the load, bands whatever. and you just make as many contacts as you can. Yeah. And this is how like you make a lot of boomers on their nets. They've been on for 60 years really mad because it's going to be a contest 24 seven, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I think we've uh, have we exhausted the uh, the topic until next time. I know I've been talking too much when my mouth gets real dry. That's OK. You have good ideas. Yeah. Yeah, I try. I was at a happy hour for like three hours yesterday and I was talking to a bunch of work guys and I'm, I was just like, I couldn't even get my words out because there's literally no saliva. Like I need more water <laughs> and no, the water couldn't even keep up. Like <laughs> The water couldn't even keep up. I, I talk 
I, I can wax eloquent on, on this kind of topic for hours, but I'm not the guy who's going to make it happen. You know, I really love talking. And, and I've been talking about this since I was a youth editor. Yeah. Contest, look up contest modernization in Zero SSC and you'll see I, I blab on about this all the time, but I'm not a programmer and um, no one listens to me. So that's why I've been, we not had, uh, have not had contest modernization yet. <laughs> so, yeah. This is something that needs to happen if we're going to keep Revelant, Revelant. <laughs> we're going to be, we're going to be in the same era that all of the other technology uh, hobbies yeah. are are in. The competing space. Right. The we, the competitive like so we we have to go and look at not not boomers and the boomer generation anymore, but like before that, Gen X, yes. Millennial, Gen Z. What are they doing right now? And how does ham radio be relevant into that? This is like the injection. This is the the COVID slash flu shot that that injects ham radio into their space. So, I mean, we talk about like, how do we get ham radio into schools or into like right now this weekend is Jamboree on the air. Like, how do we get ham radio into young people? Like you go where they are. So guys like K5ATA is going to schools and, um, you know, scouting is, you know, got a lot of ham radio influence, but like those are just like little pieces. And they're yeah, but they add so up small. to something bigger. Right. Hopefully they add up to something bigger. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Everything like being connected and all. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm part of Yoda, Youth on the Air, and, and, and we are very small. Like we do a ham radio camp for just 30 kids. And then in Region 1, in your I Region 1, they do like about 100 or 100, up to 150. I think the biggest was like 120. I like the summer camp for kids. And then we do like a contest uh, QSFO party and uh, the whole one whole month dedicated for youth and in December. Um, which would be another great opportunity to do um, to do like streaming because December Youth Month actually is a really good idea to do this kind of like idea because it's a whole month of basically youth QSO party, but it's like there's not much going on every single day, right? And there's not many youth on the air, but yeah. how do we get that? How do we juice it up a bit? Yeah, like I said earlier, like how do we spice it up a bit? Um, Bam, in a perfect way. Bam, Emerald Lagasse. So, yeah. All right. Ugh. I think you've said it all. <laughs> Pretty much. But I could keep going. But eventually I gotta shut up. Episode one of Ham Radio Beercast. What do we call it? We're gonna we're gonna workshop that the uh, idea. The colonoscopy. The, col <laughs> the colonoscopy. <laughs> the col the contest colonoscopy of ham radio. <laughs> A colonoscopy of ham radio. Maybe that's right. <laughs> Blow it all out. Start fresh. Blow Look, it worked out for me. Blow it all. <laughs> Blow it all out. <laughs> oh my all God. right. On that note. Oh, on that bombshell. That's Sterling in zero SSC. Oh yeah, and that's Kyle A's Z. Seventy three. Seventy three. I didn't even finish it off with a burp. That's kind of sad. <laughs>